Hey, welcome to the Carol Remarks Podcast. My name is Carol, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Let's get right to it. Hello and good morning. Oh, happy Monday. We made it. Good morning, my little love bunnies. I hope you're doing well. And hello to my sisters driving on her way to work at some time today. She listens every every morning on her way to not every morning, excuse me, every afternoon on her way to work. And she and I just did a live stream yesterday. You can go rewatch it on my YouTube channel. Fun chat with my baby sis. And it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that a lot. We should do that more often. Okay, so what do we have on the agenda today? Yes, you are going to hear about more silliness. Uh, this was all over the internet yesterday or the during the weekend that this uh, male athlete, Aiden Gallagher, who competed in a track girls state track event in Oregon. And this is how the <laughs> this is how the article starts off. This is written by Valerie Richardson. And I don't know where is it's from. I don't know. Washington Times, I think. All right, a male to female transgender. So this is a new way of talking about these male, these boys pretending to be girls to compete in a girls competition to dominate and win titles, money, scholarships, whatever. All right, so a male runner won a girls state track title in Oregon. When you say it like that, when you say it like the truth, it does sound ridiculous. Does it not? I hope it does. All right, a male tra- a male runner won a girls' state track title in Oregon, drawing boos from the stadium crowd and fueling the outrage over the growing presence of male-born athletes in girls' and women's sports. <clears throat> male-born athletes. How about just male athletes? Aiden Gallagher, a sophomore at McDaniel High School in Portland, took the gold medal in the girls' 200-meter race Saturday at the Oregon School Activities Association Track and Field Championship, crossing the finish line to booze from the fans at the University of Oregon's Hayward Field. Good. There are more. There, there were more boos as well as cheers when Gallagher was announced on the podium as, as the girls' 200-meter state champion as shown on a video posted on X. So this next paragraph is very important. All right, look at the girls on the podium applauding when second place, the rightful winner, is announced. <clears throat> why don't we know her name? Why don't, why don't, why wasn't her name announced in this? We're going to talk about this dude called Aiden. Let's talk about the second place winner. Well, what's her name? I don't know. The article doesn't say. And and Riley Gaines didn't put it out there either. So this they're recording a text from Riley Gaines. All right, let me start over. Look at the girls on the podium applauding when second place, the rightful winner, is announced. Then watch them when the boy's name is announced. All-American swimmer Riley Gaines wrote on X, Stop saying girls are okay with this because they aren't. This is heartbreaking and deeply regressive. So I go back and forth all the time when people say, well, girls just need to stop competing and then this will end. I have a problem with that. My first initial response when I first heard that months ago was, no, we shouldn't have to. I say we like I'm competing. I'm not. We women, girls should not have to do that nonsense. We should not have to stop and boycott and say we're not going to compete. That's not how it should be done. What should happen is the people in charge should say, no, you're a boy. Go compete with the boys. That is more common sense, is it not? And that is the right thing to do, is it not? Because we cannot recognize men or boys pretending to be girls. It is ridiculous. Ridiculous, and it needs to stop. <sighs> All right. I'm not going to read any more about that. You can go check that out. I guess I'll go put that out on my X feed right now so you can go check it out. I'm sure you've already heard all about it anyway. So there was something else. Let's see what else is happening in the news. 
All right, here's another one for you. This is just nothing but lies. This is from rnz.co.nz. That should tell you all you need to know right there. Written by, uh, it just says Murphy. <laughs> the Here's the headline. I'm going to read the headline to you, and then we're going to read it correctly. Transgender 18-year-old attempts surgery on himself at home due to lack of access. <clears throat> all right, and here's how it should read. Mental patient attempts to cut off her own breasts. That's how it should read. All right. A transgender young person attempt to perform top surgery on himself is a clear result of historical underfunding and inequitable access to gender affirming health care and expert says. Let's read it correctly. A young woman attempts to cut off her breasts is a clear result of mental illness. How about that? That reads better. I fixed it for you. <sighs> the 18-year-old turned up at an emergency department after attempting to perform a bilateral mastectomy, also known as top surgery, at home. She was several... They wrote he. I'm correcting them as we read this. She was several hours through the procedure when she became concerned and she would cause nerve damage. What? What? <laughs> she was several hours through the procedure. What in God's name is happening? Mental illness run amok. Mental illness unchecked. Y'all, she needs to be in an institution. But we don't do that anymore, remember? The case was published in the New Zealand Medical Journal on Friday... New Zealand, of course, and was described as an act of desperation. The young person was facing long wait times for a surgery referral in the public health system and was unable to afford to go to pro to go private, which can cost up to $35,000. Well, hell, just come over to America. We'll do it for you for like five, $6,000 from what I hear. I wonder why it was so backed up. Wonder why New Zealand was so backed up. Hmm. People rushing to get this done, or is it just the government health care system that they have, you know, and it's not a necessary surgery. Hello. Uh, okay. I'm not going to finish reading that, but I will put it out on my X file so you can go finish reading it if you wish. All right. What else is going on? Oh, dear heaven above, please. This next story is ridiculous. It's from the newwaysministry.org. I didn't know this was such a thing, a hermit. I didn't know there was a real thing. So, vowed hermit comes out as transgender with support of Bishop Stowe. And they have a picture of Brother Christian Matson. And what perhaps... Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. In what perhaps an historical first, a diocesan, a di, a, a diocese, a diocese, I can't pronounce it, D, diocesan, D-I-O-C-E-S-A-N, a hermit has come out as transgender and has done so with the support of his local bishop. The hermit's hope is to expand what gender diverse Catholics understand to be possible for them in the church. No! On Pentecost Sunday, Brother Christian Matson publicly announced he was trans. His bishop is Bishop John Stowe, OFM, uh, something Lexington, Kentucky, who has been a vocal supporter of LGBTQ plus people. Okay, to me, this is not real. This is not, I mean, it probably happened, but it's not real Catholics, okay? They are not real Catholics. I'm just going to say that right there. Matson, who is also a Benedictine oblate, 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 believes he is the first openly transgender person in his position in the Catholic Church. It is a difficult claim to confirm. Even Stowe told RNS he did not know for sure if Matson is the first, but Matson's status is at least highly unusual and comes at times when church officials are grappling with how to address transgender Catholics. You don't. Okay? You tell them <laughs> that they're not trans. There's no such thing. 
According to, they need to get mental help. According to Matson 39, his disclosing, as he describes it, is a moment years in the making. He offered the, his story as an, indica as an indicative of the often difficult path for trans Catholics, including those seeking life as a religious, a ca as a religious, okay, a category that includes brothers and nuns. I am currently based in the Appalachian Mountains of Eastern Kentucky. Lord have mercy. My old stomping grounds. No, no, the Appalachian Mountains of Eastern Kentucky. He wrote in an email to friends and supporters on Sunday. I live in a hermitage at the top of the wooded hill, which I share with my German Shepherd Rescue, Odie, and with the blessed sacrament, which was installed in my oratory shortly before Christmas. Y'all, it has infiltrated. Is that even a real thing? Can you do that? I mean, like, what is he? A minute? What is he? I don't know. Is he? What, what's a hermit? I didn't know that was a thing in the Catholic Church. Weird. Okay, that I, there's more. This, this story's very long. I will put that out on X, and then we're going to go to the question of the day, because I've had enough of this insanity for this morning. All right, let's see. Question of the day. But before we get to the question of the day, I have been scrolling back through all of my mentions from you guys, because I'm trying to find quotes where you quoted me. Because I, I was talking privately with Rowdy Introvert, because I bought his t-shirt. and uh, Anyway, I was private messaging back and forth. And I said, man, I wish I had a business mind like you. I need some merchandise. I need some t-shirts. And he says, well, your love bunnies always are quoting you. I'm sure there's some good t-shirt material there. And I was like, Lord, why can't I have a business mind like that? So, but that's why I have friends like you. So I've been going back through my mentions and trying to find quotes where you've quoted me. So I'm going to start some t-shirts for y'all. <laughs> okay. Some merchandise. All right. Question of the day. All right. We're going to do this one. I did this one with my sister the other yesterday on the live stream. You're, you have to take a road trip from Maine to San Diego, California, and you have to take three people with you. And we're going to throw a wrench in this one. It can't be family members. It can't be people, you know, friends. We're going to go with famous people. What three famous people would you take with you on the road trip? My, the first two people that came to my mind was Kelly J. Keene. And y'all know who she is because I talk about her or I've talked about her a lot lately. She's the women campaigner who lives in England. And she, she comes over here every so often. I think she's going to come to Nashville soon. And if she does, I will lose my mind and I will definitely go. So Kelly J. Keene. The second person I would automatically came to my brain was Donald Trump. <laughs> Although I don't know what we would talk about business, I guess. <laughs> and the third person would be Mike Rowe because, uh, you know, and all of his living and all of his travels and all of his dirty jobs, I would think he would. And also he's a great storyteller. I think he would uh, entertain us quite nicely and teach us some things along the way. So those are my three people, Kelly J. Keene, Donald Trump, and, uh, Although Donald Trump might be a little, he might be a little prima donna. Some he might mean he might need all the attention. So I may have to replace him. Although he would still be a good pick, but you know we don't want to have to cater to him all the time because he was an ex former president. But okay, <laughs> I need some regular people with me on my trip. Okay, uh, that's it for now. Gotta go. You guys have a great day. Thanks for listening. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? What's that? We're not a democracy!